Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Voice of Pancreatic Cancer podcast. I'm Miranda Weinberg with the Sina Magowitz Foundation. And if you don't know about the Sina Magowitz Foundation, we're a nonprofit that's committed to the awareness, prevention, and cure of pancreatic cancer. One of the ways that we do that is through partnerships with organizations like the Medical College of Wisconsin, who also share that same value. So today we're going to be uh, talking with Dr. Susan Sai and Jenny Gertz. And now I'm going to read you Jenny's title because it's quite a lengthy one. She's the director of Mas the Master of Science in Genetic Counseling Program in the Institute for Health and Equity, and also the Associate Director of Genetic Counseling at the Genomic Science and Precision Medicine Center. So thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us, Miranda. And I'm excited, you, Miranda. Yeah, good to see you. And uh, if you guys have been tuning in, you probably recognize Dr. Sai. She's been with us before. So today we're going to be talking about genetic testing. But for, before we begin, I'd like to just take a moment to thank our sponsors. Uh, we wouldn't be able to impact the lives that we are able to reach without you guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. I mean, I think it would be good for um, those of us that are unfamiliar to talk about what a genetic counselor actually does. Wonderful. Thanks, Miranda. Yeah, so a genetic counselor is another member of the care team uh, for those um, that have uh, been familiar with getting treatment for pancreatic cancer, maybe attended appointments for a loved one, um, they'll know there's many people on the care team. <laughs> so um, folks like Dr. Sai, who's a surgeon that specializes in pancreatic cancer, medical oncologists, nurse practitioners, dietitians, diabetes educators, the list goes on and on. So I'm proud to be one of those multidisciplinary team members in genetic counseling. So when I explain it to patients, I explain that um, coming to see us is like having a big pie and I'm just a little slice of the pie. So I'm the genetic slice. So for genetics, what we're doing for patients is we're trying to answer the question of why did this happen? which is often a huge question and it's not easy to answer and we can't always provide answers. And then we're also trying to answer the question of what does this mean for my family? Are they at risk? Is this something that they could also develop? And then more recently, we've been involved in ans asking the question and answering the question of, is there a way that my cancer could be treated more effectively through precision medicine and genetics? For genetic testing, for when someone hears that and they think about the 23andMe versus getting this deeper uh, test, would you s encourage everyone to do it? I mean, how does a patient know that they qualify? Oh, yeah, that's a wonderful question, Miranda. I think, you know, really, that's the question is who gets genetic testing? Who even has access to genetic testing? There are some folks out there who advocate that this should be population health, that just anybody who wants it should get it. And I think they have good arguments and some good data. I think, of course, we have to keep in mind is how, how informed are people when they're pursuing this and, and what does a positive result mean? You know, it's not destiny. As I mentioned, it's not a crystal ball. It doesn't guarantee someone's going to get cancer. So we want to make sure that they kind of emotionally and mentally manage that information okay. Um, but reality is right now um, we have criteria, um, criteria, can be set by professional guidelines, evidence-based, you know, um, consensus, expert consensus, and based on the medical literature. And then we have guidelines that are insurance-based. <laughs> so those can unfortunately um, differ sometimes. Um, so I will tell you that right now, um, you know, professional societies, but very well uh, respected societies and many insurance companies say that anyone who has had pancreatic adenocarcinoma, that's the more common type of pancreatic cancer, should be offered genetic testing to evaluate for those germline mutations to see if it was an inherited cause to their cancer. So regarding these tests, I mean, is there any truth to the concept of ignorance is bliss? I mean, is it really better to know if you have one of these mutations? So a little of that is kind of in the eye of the beholder and your personality and kind of, you know, if you're the type that is in, you know, empowered by information or not. Um, and I would say, you know, it's important to make a distinction between pancreatic cancer and maybe conditions um, like Alzheimer's disease, where if you find out you're at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease, 
you know, medically, are, can your doctors do anything different for you? It's hard to say right now how useful, medically useful that information is, maybe personally useful to you. With pancreatic cancer, there's there's more hope on the horizon. There's been some wonderful things happening with pancreatic cancer screening. And I think that that's one of the questions that I would have a patient ask themselves is how would you use this information? Um, because we can detect pancreatic cancer early when we know who to screen. So, you know, the first step is looking at that family history and saying, okay, is this a family history that would qualify to consider genetic testing? The second step is to offer the genetic testing for family members that want to know that information. Um, and in some families, we're able to identify that genetic mutation. Like I mentioned, BRCA2 is one of those examples, but there's other genes. And we're able to have a really informative genetic marker that says, Either you have the gene or you don't. And so we can divide the family into two different groups and say, these family members do not have the gene that's been causing the pancreatic cancer in the family. And these family members that didn't inherit that gene are at average risk and can be reassured. We still are at risk for you know population risk for cancer because everyone's at risk for developing cancer, but they're at least not high risk for pancreatic cancer. And then the other group in the family who did identify as uh, testing positive for the genetic mutation, it's not a guarantee that the cancer will happen. We know it's an increased risk and it depends on the gene. You know, an increased risk anywhere from, you know, two or 3% lifetime risk for pancreatic cancer, maybe upwards to one of some of the stronger genes, like a 30 to 40% chance for pancreatic cancer. So somewhere in that range. So by no means 100%. But that would be their lifetime risk. And we don't want them just sitting and stewing with that information. We want them to feel empowered and do something about it. So for those individuals who would test positive for the gene in the family, we would offer them pancreatic cancer screening. Thank you so much for your time. And is there anything else we wanted to add? Well, Miranda, I just want to thank you for the invitation. I think, again, any uh, opportunity that we have to make genetic information sound, you know, more approachable and less scary and, and, you know, maybe get people to start thinking about things a little bit differently. Um, it's becoming so routine, so standard of care. Um, I would just encourage people if they have questions, they have concerns, even if they're not sure that they want to have genetic testing, that's okay. Um, just request to meet with a genetic counselor and we can provide more information. And again, going back to that, um, if you feel like knowledge is power and you're the type of person who wants to kind of take things into your own hands and say, hey, if there's something I can do to prevent what's been happening in my family or find cancer early and have a better outcome, um, I want to do that. Um, then, and then the genetic counseling is probably going to be right for you because we'll be able to provide information um, that will hopefully, um, you know, make you feel like you are ready to be in charge of your own health care and stop stop cancer in its tracks, really. Yeah, at least definitely find it earlier. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you ladies so much for joining us and uh, we hope to have you back again soon. Thanks, Miranda, have a great day. Thanks, Miranda.